justification in his report. So he knew Colonel Alexander. I see. And um, one per one of like I'm saying, I'm trying to cover a lot of territory here. Um, a book was just published by Nick Cook of Jane's Defense Weekly on um, the Black Budget Project, and I'm featured in the book. And were you part of a black budget? Somebody's um, our black budget here in the U.S. or Canadian okay. black budgets or both? No, these probably both. Both. Um, what I've learned to date from this new publication just in the last couple of months is that, that um, Lockheed Martin Skunk Work has the Hutchison effect now. All written down by Nick Cook, who's uh, chief aviation editor for Jane's Defense Weekly. Oh, really? Uh, I wonder if they regard it as a propulsion system, uh, an invisibility system, a, uh, a levitation system. Uh, what do you think they're doing with a, or should I even be asking? You can ask me. I don't mind. Okay. They're probably advancing it for advanced um, propulsion technologies. That would have been my guess. Yeah. Let's see. Nick was hammering away for a long time on this project to find answers to the black budget the billion dollar question it first uh, aired on um, in 2000 on TLC where this Boyd Bushman starts to admit things and showing my videos yeah, as a matter as a matter of fact uh, on one of the videos uh, it says in block letters I think TLC so this ran on the learning channel yeah some of these were on the learning channel and Fox TV <sighs> I yep, gave TLC I see it <laughs> yeah. As things fly off the table, and, uh, that was a glass of something that just flew off the table uh, with a cup in it, or with a uh, spoon in it. Spoon in it. I'm trying to think what that one would be. I got so so many of these things, but um, they would find the art. Okay, when I do a show for Fox or TLC, I'm interviewed. They use the stock footage, and then they will get a guest on, like um, Jack Halcombe McDonald Douglas or Colonel Alexander, who appeared on my behalf on TLC. I see. Or many other people, Tom Ballone. And uh, out others. of curiosity, what did John Alexander say about the Hutchinson effect on TLC? He gave it um, a fairly good um, thing. He basically said, I'm trying to go by memory here, it's a nice piece they did on me, um, good producers and that. Basically, um, Colonel John B. Alexander said, and felt, you know, this is very hard to explain why a steel bar is very hard at one end and the other end is like lead, is one of the things he mentioned on TLC. Um, the others is that they had the video analyzed at Los Alamos National Laboratory to see if it was a fake or not. Right. And it wasn't a fake. Right. This is the old Super 8 millimeter film. The old stuff. You sure? Yeah, oh, yeah. This is prior to the video stuff that you're seeing now. Uh, so then... Somehow it was decided that um, they would start to get the project going. And Alex Pizarro, George Hathaway made their presentation to, I would say, the Pentagon because it involved a close relationship to Ronald Reagan's Star Wars. Uh -huh. and one, one general wanted to inform the president right away, but then the other general said, well, what if this turns out to be... Um, a fake would be a very bad embarrassment for the U.S. government. Now, I'm to told this verbally, of course, um, by Alex Pizarro and George Hathaway. So it was decided then to uh, do a look and see. So John arranged the team, I believe. I don't know all the details yet. And uh, we were working four months. And John would make his appearances once in a while, and then the whole team came. But unfortunately, it was a bad element in that team, a Bob Freeman or Freiburg. Um, we all refer to him as Bad Bob, who bad uh, Bob. basically wanted this thing shut down. And John didn't feel that, that was proper, that the report... The well, repo why did he want it shut down? That I don't know. Um, I mean, he must have had some argument. He must have had an argument of some type. I know that he was very much against Tom Bearden talking about classified material. For some reason, he got into an argument with uh, Colonel Alexander in the backseat of the car that Alex Pizarro was driving. Oh. And um, 
Alex just simply said, will you guys please tone it down, turn to drive. But Bob had this thing about security and was very, I felt he just knew something and wanted the thing shut down, so just write a bad report. And he also accused us actually of having a multi-million dollar laboratory producing these effects with lightning bolts. With lightning bolts? Yeah. <laughs> I was told by Pizarro. Um, um, that that well, no, that couldn't be because uh, uh, because you would uh, you'd have a complete whiteout of the uh, the camera taking the pictures. I see no lightning bolts. I, I for example, one scene in the video, folks. Uh, for those of you who can't see it, shows uh, one of those plastic bottles uh, all collapsed in, crushed in, and then slowly coming out. Now. What did that? That was that was basically the same field. We tried so many different samples over the years. The same field that picked a wrench up off the table, the same field that picked all those other heavy things up, collapsed a plastic bottle? Yes. It also would lick water out. Um, but the, we called that, it was nicknamed the breathing effect by Alex Pizarro because we noticed that would happen on solid rubber objects too. Really? Yeah, we just seem to squeeze it in and out, in and out. Now, I could see, I can imagine an effect on a metallic object. It's hard to imagine an effect on water or milk or something in a glass, and yet, or rubber. Yeah. And it, yet, all these things... <sighs> it affects everything. Um, for some reason, none of us got hurt in these experiments. That's amazing in itself. Although we did feel the field... Pressure. That's what I was going to ask. Uh, were you able to determine the size of the field produced? Uh, yes. Um, the distance was up to 300 feet away, and that was confirmed to me by an employee of Los Alamos National Laboratories. 300 feet? 300 feet away from the lab itself. He approached me and said, these are the measurements I got. I don't know what they mean. And I said, well, that's very interesting. I'll take them into consideration. All right. Uh, what about... A directional aspect. In other words, I would think uh, one of the first things they would try and do is to focus and direct the effect, the Hutchinson effect. That was the idea, brilliant idea, of a very brilliant scientist, Jack Houck, McDonnell Douglas, who felt that if we could somehow focus this field, it would be self-lifting. So you could actually lift the whole lab itself up. <laughs> yeah. And all you need, all you need is a, um, an energy scavenging system, and you got self power. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> I, well, I don't know about that, but I can see yeah. the, the mil military, for example, would want to focus this effect because if you could do that, uh, oh my! All right, hold on, uh, John. John Hutchinson is my guest. I suggest you use this break. And I'm very serious about this. To go to my website, if you have access to a computer, go to uh, Program, second item down, tonight's guest info, uh, John Hutchinson's name, and click on Videos and Photos of Experiments. It's a knockout, I'm telling you. From Canada comes John Hutchinson, uh, discoverer of the Hutchinson Effect, which is on display on my website right now. If you'd like to go to artbell.com, go to uh, a program, tonight's guest info, you really do need to see these videos. Objects not... Levitating might be the wrong word. They just literally take up and go. I mean, they rocket off the table. A multitude of objects made of all kinds of things, not just metal, but glass, liquid, plastics, um, metal that uh, ends up uh, misshapen on one end and softer on one end than the other, and all kinds of strange things. I just uh, had a quick conversation during the news with Colonel Alexander. Really, uh, really amazing stuff, and you've got to see it for yourself. All right, playing a little catch-up there. You know, looking again at these videos, one uh, criticism somebody might make is, well, these are videos being played in reverse, and these are objects being dropped, not uh, uh, not going up, as in levitating, or actually not levitating so much as just rocketing up. Now, 
I don't uh, 